Hello everybody and welcome back. We are going into the second attempt at Savoia. This time we've just had a server update shipped. While we were having that little interview and the little break, the devs were hard at work and now they get to play. Let's see if this is going to be any different. Hopefully it will be. And either way, we're still going to get to see a lot more action on this brand new map. I hope you guys are enjoying the map so far. Indeed, it seems like you were. The knife round just about to go underway. I'm joined, of course, by Kaiserson, and on production is Dark doing an absolutely fantastic job today. Yeah, this match is beautiful. And we got a good reason why it the way it is, and pretty good reasons and there uh, at the moment. Pretty equal. Free first is free on a knife round. Seems like the axes are winning it slightly, and that's gonna be uh, Team Howard. Oh, the tuna. Picks on res. So it's uh well, up to uh, Nelios and Alex, and he's probably going to favor Nelios, and there we have it. Finally, we gain the game side. Off to the knife round. A little bit long, good knife round compared to most. Yeah, I just well, want to get into the game. Absolutely, we want to see the meat of things. This is what everybody's here to see, exactly. I mean, we've had a pretty good preview of the map. We've seen a lot of it already in action, but we want to see exactly how it plays out in a competitive setting. Both of these teams seem pretty balanced from what we've seen so far and indeed based on the statistics as we had up on the screen before it started uh, two wins for each and eight draws all together so it should be interesting especially to see the developers who have made this game and this map and how they approach playing the game and it looks like a is going to be approached pretty quickly mid going to be completely avoided that leaves only one player to defend that is Nelio smokes being deployed over towards A. We can see those beautiful smokes just blocking off absolutely everything. These were teased earlier on for MU2. It was officially previewed, and now you get to see them in action. Helio's going to be taken out early on here, but... Ooh, that was awkward. But eventually taken out as Rez is the one to find the opening for the Axis. But is it a little bit too late over on that A site? Ooh, Howard finds ahead of Alex, and that's gonna make it into a 4 for the two. Well, missed down for that, so you do have that advantage, but in a retake situation where it's 4 versus 2, where both players can, like, two players can go into one entrance and another player go into another, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, especially since Sergeant goes out very alone, very exposed, and he's gonna fall to see tune up doing the exact same thing. He's managed to get res at least, but Howard's gonna clean it up, and first round, going towards Team Howard. I'm a little bit sad that James only got killed this round. We all know he's the best player on the server. <laughs> Said by the devs themselves. Absolutely, I can't argue with you anymore. As of course, the, the devs did say it themselves. Although it'll be interesting to see. I mean, the games that I've seen before, it has generally been Bramerton who's on top, not to put any pressure on him, but I certainly expect to see him upping his kills over the next couple of rounds. Generally, it seems like the allies in the first bit of gameplay we saw were taking control towards middle. Now easing off there, going towards that wow. A site, getting the bomb down, and ultimately around kind Look of... Look what Howard has got, Mitch. Oh, after that conversation, going straight for the sniper card. I like it. Let's see what he can do with that. Taking his way over towards what I suppose we can call sandbags. Of course, we got to make up a lot of these calls on the fly. This is a brand new map. Ooh, misses a shot, but... This position seems pretty good. You can see the cross to B side as well as mid. Pretty good sidelines for Howard there, but for the time being, no one on Team Brown is showing themselves. In fact, Big Tuna going to take down Rez and two plus is free. And then getting tagged up, not looking too great for Team Brown in this round. Yeah, not at all. The Axis able to get early aggression there, completely unpunished. Rez finds kills up behind the allies and just gets away with his life. He's going to be taken out later on but now it's going to be Nelios looking for a, the final kill Alex the last player alive he was falling earlier on in the rounds over on Manor this time staying alive in the late round attempting to get the plan but ultimately Howard is going to take that challenge and find the kill with the assistance of Nelios that was a good shot from Howard I don't know if you saw he was still in sandbags position and he shot through the double doors like the wooden doors Oh, no, I didn't see that at all. That's fantastic. I mean, he's obviously got quite a bit of knowledge of this map. The devs have been working on it for quite a while, so they know where the where the bomb site is, where to pre-fire, all that sort of stuff. But as of yet, the allies don't seem to know how to win a round. They're struggling to get that in. Yeah, we saw that last time we was on this map. The allies struggling. It was 
went down to 6-0 at one point, but they did manage to get two runs and destroy an economy, so it is possible for the Allies to get back into this and looking even more possible since they are trying to go towards the beast side and Sergeant like I'm unable to find any Franks just yet. And uh, the rest of his team trying to get that A long control. Just trying to spread across the map, see if they can get some picks and try and find an opening just somewhere in the team house defense. Well, they've managed to stay alive quite a bit longer and this time they're taking middle control and having a pretty good time at it. They've made their way all the way down. It looks like again A is going to be the favorite side as they're gravitating towards it. They've got to be careful because Nelios is in the same position towards the allied, or the Axis side truck, I should say. He's going to be holding down for the aggression, hearing a lot of players come. That spot is prenated, but he makes his way just about away from it. Not able to land the head just yet of the stairs player. That is Spike as Alex falls. The trades come in. Ash and, and Nelios and Howard now taken down. Sergeant Lag doing huge work with the 2k as Brownerton comes in with one. Rez not able to connect the shot, but Sergeant Lag is there to find the kill. And he's actually looking for another over towards the house. And the only player left alive, of course, is going to be Rez. Sergeant Lag already with a 3k about to walk through the door. If he does, he'll find Rez not quite looking at him. Going for the challenge now. Doesn't find the kill, so no 4k to come in for Sergeant Lag. As Rez, I think he's just going to be trying to save now. He's, he has got an STG and an AK. An AK? That's interesting. An AK? That's that's not what he has at all. <laughs> <laughs> the CS casting just autopiloting me there. He has got, I believe... Uh, M1, M1 Grand. 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 Yeah. It's very small. But he'll be able to carry over those weapons to the next round, hopefully. Yeah, but you can see, like... Team Brown is in the approach, going a little bit more slow, getting those picks early on, and not going too aggressive. They worked in their favor that round, and they managed to get those openings. Sergeant like getting a massive 3k, helping them out, winning that round. And now it's 2-1. Very different compared to the last time we saw it on this map. Maybe Team Brown is taking a little bit of notes from Team Howard. Yeah, going a little no. bit more passive instead of aggressive. Mm, absolutely. I mean, taking late mid control there with the smokes, that's something we didn't see them doing earlier on in the previous games, and it certainly worked out for them in that iteration of the round. But let's see what they go for this time. Two to one is the score line. So far, it does seem to be the Axis side that are favored on Savoya, but still plenty of time for those statistics to change. Early pre nades are missed towards mid, or rather, just don't connect as the allies. Once again, like you said, Kaiserson, playing this a little bit more passive. Although they are pretty spread out, there's no opportunities for trades as the players are pushing over towards the B site, taking things maybe slightly more aggressive than they need to. And it's Sergeant Lag and Bramerton taking challenges onto the site as the flank is coming around. King Howard's going to find himself a nice and easy kill, waiting to line up the headshot or spot out some more players. Doesn't quite manage it, but just drop a player and make his way all the way up behind the allies now he's been going i mean he described his team as the more passive of the teams and yet howard is up behind the allies already it was contemplating taking the ladder but of course that does mean putting your gun away and so he will take the stairs instead that means he'll be taking a challenge onto spike jumps past him Spike eventually figures out where he is. Did a lot of damage, but... Oh, never mind. I was going to say ultimately he'll survive, but he actually gets taken down. As Alex is also going to fall, and Bramerton, it's only going to be Big Juno left alive. And at this point, I mean, saving some tokens over will probably be his best chance into the round. Yeah, maybe if he can try and pick up a gun somewhere nearby, but... I don't know, Axe, he's probably going to clean this up. And uh, right now... <clears throat> should be a 3-1 going into favorite Team Howard, but that was really good play there from Howard. Going from the back, causing some damage and causing some trouble. And uh, that's gone in that round. Juno does manage to keep his Thompson at least, and a grenade. So that's another thing nades also carry over to the rounds. And uh, Team Howard still a little bit more favorable on their cur um, current economy. Team Brown, knocking, we really need to be able to buy much. Maybe a smoke here, spray net, maybe I'm going for some M1 carbines. We are seeing a little bit more M1 carbines. Spike and Bremer and Alex all picking up them, just leaving lag, keeping that grease gun. Interesting to see what they're going to go for. Probably something a little bit more aggressive, getting close with those closer range guns. We'll try and do some more longer range damage. 
Ash taking down Bremer early on, and it's going to cause some trouble, Team Bremer. Howard also up close with the shotgun, so even if they do attempt to approach on Ash, he'll be able to do some good damage. Either as they push into him or as they come up behind, and Ash is going in for another headshot already. And he spots out a third player. Doesn't quite go for the shot, but a little bit of information as the player pushing down towards middle. That might prompt Howard to go a little bit more aggressive, and it certainly looks like it is, as he's going to be coming up behind them. Yet again, the more passive team doesn't seem to be a statement that's holding the test of time. As now the Allies are going to make their way down towards A. Aggressive positions already being taken. Oh, Nelio's not going to hit it to start it off, but eventually manages the hip fire with the MP40 before backing off. Now only going to be Sergeant Lag left, looking on in dismay as his team are taken out. He's in a 1 versus 5 with a grease gun. It is a powerful weapon, but is it going to be that powerful? Takes out the Tommy and not able to connect it. I believe uh, we were talking to the devs earlier. They said the grease gun and the MP28 have got a two times multiplier on the head now, so it's a little bit better. It's kind of like the the CZ of the game, but yeah, Tech Nine. But it's not a. It's not going to be your best chance of picking up that one versus five by a long shot. No, not by a long shot. But we are seeing a little bit more of it by here. Three ML grants on the hands of Team Bremer. Two STGs, as well as like two M on grands as well, and axes. Can't still favor the axes winning this, but it does seem like Team Bremer going very fast down Avon, getting that control pretty quickly, and Res seems to have spun them out. I think one of the problems here is that the axes aren't really having to rebuy. Not a whole lot of damage is being done to their economy, so they can just build that up bit by bit, buy some better guns to enable each player to take close and long range engagements. We're seeing shotguns and SMGs grouping up, as well as M1 Grands and SMGs. It just makes life so much more difficult for you when players you're coming up against can take you long or short range. Howard able to pick up one with that. Tommy go, oh, what a shot, as he manages to take Alex out of the game with a nice crispy headshot, 90 degree flick as well. Making his way down towards mid. Not being watched for some reason. Sergeant Lag is going to fall. And so it's all on Big Tuna. M1 ground in hand. Waiting for the repeat from Howard. Backs off. Possibly at just the wrong moment. Howard now making his way just that little bit closer. And picking himself up an M1 grand. He'll be able to equalize this situation. And as Rez finds the kill on the Tuna with the help of Howard. We see a fifth round for the Axis. And although that first round win bringing us to 2-1 was looking good for the Allies. They've now lost three in a row. Which does mean they're getting a little bit of a bonus in terms of tokens. A three or more loss bonus gives three tokens to each player. So that will allow them to get a pretty good buy, especially if they stack one eco on top of that. As we can see, Spike saving up three tokens will probably be a couple of grands coming out relatively soon. But Howard right now, he's picked up the scope again. Didn't really do much previously. We have spoken a little bit about the scope, and there we have it. Finally, first kill of the scope, taking down Bremen, as well as James, best player on Team Bremen, getting his kill. That's his first kill of the map, in fact. And uh, it's already a five versus three. But finally, we get to see some scope action. We saw Tuna talk about, well, I mean, we saw Howard talking about how good the scopes are. We finally get to see some action, but oh my god, Ash. Ash is going insane right now, he gets another 2k. He's been playing so, so well in this series, to be honest. Absolutely, and not only that, goes for further aggression and finds that third. Ash is not taking any crap from the allies right now and not giving them any control. The only thing he is taking is map control. And tokens. And tokens. Oh, he's taking a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. But things that the allies don't want him to have, that's the important part. The solid round opening up, and I mean, the MP40 is on display here. Absolutely fantastic spray down and claiming two lives in the process and then finally grabbing that hip fire just showing off every aspect of the gun right there yeah but honestly i still want to see some more scope action i was saying how important like the scopes on this map and i do believe him especially on a map like this where it's longer range powers and that's going to cost allies especially since they've got low economy but brama himself an m1 grand so it's bike so it's going to equal things out slightly but that's the kind of thing that Howard are talking about. Howard, he gets taken out by Brammer. It's going to cost them a lot. 
Yeah, that's a really hefty investment taken away from the Axis to start us off. A scope card already lost. Rez is going to be taken out as well. As we see Ash attempting to come in on the rotation. He's looking for some kills. He found a lot in the previous round, but now it's only him and James left alive. James, rumored to be the best player on the server right now. And he better be because he's in a 1v3. Ash getting taken down, crossing over. Bramanen's position now known will be checked by James. He finds himself the opening. 1v2 now. This is a situation that is pretty winnable on this A site. We've seen the defense of the allies being pretty weak over here. And as James has already spotted out one, he's just going to wait for the repeat to come in. STG in hand, spamming through the wood, not finding anything in his position. Confirmed to still be there. Makes his way up the ladder. A nice little ladder display there from James before he eventually tries to take the round. He'll pick up one token. All gets shot from the balcony and doesn't quite realize it in time as Big Tuna gets that two times multiplier kill with the grease gun and trades it out for a token and an STG. And it's going to be a pretty good trade for him. Yeah. He brings that over to the next round. Tuna played that so so well, getting in that advantage angle. Like if he peaked, if he went up the ladder, Tuna would have heard it, caught that information and kill him. If he went towards tank, Tuna would have heard it as well, and would be able to get the kill again. So Tuna was in such a strong position there against James, and he had to kind of count him out there. But into the new round, STG in the hands of Tuna as well as the M1 Carbine. Also STG on the hands of Spike. So oh, STG is being played as well as being James and Rez being two players. Axie's holding them. I do like the STG personally. I know you're a fan of the car. Absolutely. I might be a fan of the MP40 after all this action we're seeing. Howard coming in with a 3k. That is fantastic. As it's only going to be Bramerton left alive. And I mean, we heard what he thought of his team earlier on. We can only imagine what thoughts are running through his head now. Although, missing that shot. Things aren't looking all too good for him. Eventually, he finds that kill. But one over towards the car. He's incredibly exposed as he jumps across eventually making his way out of that sticky situation the nade coming in if that hits oh not quite jumping out though he's going to be crossfired here it's going to be difficult for him to survive some i mean how is he still alive right now he's been shot from like 15 different angles at this point somehow he have eventually taken out. taken out eventually by yeah. ash he's been playing really well as well as howard like he's been playing these angles so well like just finding an opening in Team Brammer's um, attack and just getting behind and just getting multiple kills with that MP40. Like we've seen it multiple multiple times now. Surely Brammer's team's gonna learn eventually, especially since we already heard Brammer say, watch your backs on Howard in our interview. And he's probably gonna be repeating those words every single round on this attack into this map, but it does seem like the economy is slightly broken for Team Brammer. Only a bar in the hands of Alex as well as a carbine on the hands of Brammer. Be able to do much damage in these longer duels, but you can't really see them winning this round either, to be honest. Looks like it will be a free judging by the economy itself, and judging by that kill from Ash. Ash is playing so, so well this game. Yeah, absolutely. Already up 11 kills, but it is Howard's at top frag with 12 after an impressive 3k in the previous round with the MP40. Rez coming in with a 1 in this with the STG headshot. Howard's going to have to find some. Actually, maybe not because Ash is there to help him out a little bit. Goes aggressive. This could be a mistake indeed. It is only managing one kill before being taken down by Sergeant Lag, but he's in a 1v4 now. So that aggression is warranted. Here we see a bar actually being taken out by the Allied side. Haven't seen this used all too much so far. It's the second kill of the show match. And now in a 1v3, about to be jumped on, I think, by Rez, who's gradually making his way around to an angle that he can challenge Sergeant Lag from. That's an easy kill. The nade drop, though, is going to stop him from jumping down just yet. And he just about gets the token and the bar. An interesting decision, actually, to go for that bar. He's going to have an STG and a bar gun moving into the next round. Two pretty similar guns. I suppose it saves you from having to reload now 8 to 2 though Howard's team doesn't need a whole lot of saving it's team Bramerton that are going to need to pick things up as they are at a huge disadvantage it seems we found team Howard's map yeah and speaking about picking things up Howard again picks up that scope which we've been talking about so so much and it's like once again the same angle in that like sandbags position which gets such great viewpoints if he reaches it and 
Ooh, Brahma taking Howard out again. Brahma's being able to shut down Howard every time he's picked up that scope. Risky buy, it seems like. Warranted. Well, not warranted in this case. Is. Very oh. close angle. He does manage to take down Alex. It looks like he's going to meet some more trouble if he's not too careful. He needs to be really careful here with that SCG in hand and no teammates really to back him up. It does seem like Grammar finding a new justice game. Two more kills, just leaving Nelios and Rez. Talking about Nelios, he goes down. Just the Rez left in a one versus three and his life is short in this world. It's only going to be Rez left alive. Like, he has not got a whole lot of opportunity to come into this round. The one advantage he has got is that the bomb is in his possession, but being flanked out here by Sergeant Lag, it doesn't seem to be... Oh, that's awkward. Oh, that's awkward. He jumps yes. down in front of him after not checking him. Rez able to pick up at least another token. And with the STG and the bar in hand, with 22 seconds left, he's going to make his way further away from the bomb, actually. And try to get a good angle to get Bramerton as he is forced to move towards that site. Doesn't look like such an angle exists. Rez making his way in now. He's probably going to go for the spam through the wood. Not finding the kill. Not quite spamming the right angle. Bramerton is going to be peeking. No, that's risky. In a round they need to win. He's taken out. Rez finds the kill with the STG. That's an ace. Yeah, and an ace overall. <laughs> a fantastic round to come in. I mean, it said he didn't have that big of a chance coming in. But that, that is clearly a lie. What a fantastic yeah. round played out. And whoever said James was the best player on the team? It must it's... be Rez now. No, he's top hashtag... fragging with 17 kills. Yeah, hashtag Team Rez now. <laughs> Only two kills on James. And uh, it's a little bit sad, especially since I said as well as the devs that he's the best player in the office. But Rez taking that title now, I'm pretty sure. Does seem like we do have some more SCGs. Ash picking up one, and uh, looks like mostly it's quite an eco round coming in from Axis. Seems like Allies done a lot of damage, and they able to get him on ground due to the loss bonus. So seems like Team Howard needs to be a little bit more careful. And there we have it, King Howard and Ash falling down first, but he Rez, the hero of the previous round, managed to get one kill, unable to find the second, and that's James falling, just leaving Rez and Nidios. A two versus four, and HP is regening on Team Brammer. This round's not looking too good. I said that last time, and somehow Rez managed to pull it back, and Rez doing his best takes out another player, Alex. Making it two versus three. In the moment, this is the Rez show. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the past two rounds certainly have been... And as they're coming into this, a nade is deployed over towards the side. Is it going to land a kill? No, just on the opposite side of the wall. But Rez might still be able to connect one with that STG. As we see Nelios coming up to a system on the stairs. Only 25 seconds left. They've got to make some work. Ooh, Rez finding a kill towards Dark Room over on the back of the site. Nelios has spotted, or rather knows now where Big Tuna is. But no chance of winning this round with such low time and two allies still left alive. Oh, he almost finds the opening, but it is going to be a redundant nade deployed. M1 Grand in hand. He's just looking for some damage. And he finds one, maybe even a second bomb. Explodes and a token saved. Yeah, Indeed. and uh, that went a little bit too close. I don't know what the other player was. It Sergeant Lag or Spike? I think it was Spike, wasn't it? Who just started jumping around the site. A little bit weird, allowing Nino to take the tag away from him. A little bit upsetting from Rez, you saw him jump around the corner aiming down sight and his feet were planted to the ground and very risky play to do that and you can see why it cost him his life and probably cost him the round as well. So that's going to be the third round for the allies. And now the economy looks pretty even judging by the weapons being picked by both teams. Yeah, there's going to be a pretty balanced round coming in except for the fact that there is of course a six round advantage towards the Axis. So that's going to put a little bit of desperation into the bones of the allies. They need to pick some more up as we move closer and closer to the end of the half and the sides swapping over. The allies are losing men early on and it looks to continue as Rez. Oh, goes for the challenge. Doesn't find anything though, except for death. It is Nelios to open it up as the A push comes in. He's looking for more and he only finds a bullet to the head. As Ash and James, two high performing players, are given a chance to come into this round and show us what they've got. And what they have are gears. 
Well, they're going to have to do some work with these, especially as up close is Spike. He's got oh, that STG right. in hand, and as the push comes in, should be able to connect some decent damage. That was a little bit unlucky there from Ash. And James, going to be aware of um, Spike's position and should be able to get this kill on him. He's able to pick up that gun as well. It's going to help his chances just slightly. He's been quiet all game. Let's see if he's awake. And this time he jumps in and uh, loses his life to Tuna. And that's going to be the fourth round for Team Brammer. Um, looking a lot better now, Team Brammer. Looking a little bit more coordinated. Looking like they're a little bit more sharp game. The frags and Spike. He's looking a little bit more richer. Picks up the M1 Grand. And the economy seems to be a little bit too down. Only an SCG and MP40 being picked up by Team Howard, as well as uh, two Gooers. So, pretty weak buy, but still quite weak buy. No scopes on the hands of Team Brammer. Two bars and two ML grants. Now, right now, actually, we see two bars coming out, as you said, and a lot of utility to back them up as well. Bramerton goes for a nade and a smoke, along with Big Tuna and Alex, so we should see a pretty powerful execute coming over. I think we were talking to Bramerton before. He said that his team are certainly more the strat-heavy team versus Team Howard, who tend to play a little bit more of a puggy style. And indeed, that's working out for them so far. Two kills already swinging over to their favor early on. As the axe is looking strong again, Alex not able to connect anything as Big Tune is also taken out along with Sergeant Lag. That's a clean round coming out for the Axis in going into the final round of the half. I just got some insider info as well from none other than Howard himself that uh, Joe is in fact mad right now. And I'm um, not exactly surprised. <laughs> His team not doing too great. And uh Looking into the fire round 10 4. If this turns into 11 4 half, you have to kind of favor Team Howard going into the second half, especially since we've seen them in in the warm up game, me and you personally. They had a yeah. pretty good allied half on this map. Yeah, so we would expect to see that unfolding yet again, but it remains to be seen. We gotta wait for at least one more round until we find out if Team Howard can have a great allied half. Certainly, if we can see something as strong as this Axis, it'll be a fairly one-sided map of Savoy, and we'll definitely have time to get Invasion in. Coming out here, it is going to be James, not able to connect the shots, though. This could be a good fifth round for the Allies. Oh, they need to connect more than that, as Rez is somehow walking through Underpass. He doesn't even need to worry about angles, he's just shooting heads off. Howard is able to find one as well. And just like that, the round is flipped on its head. The allies have the disadvantage. The only thing on their side is time. And the only thing on Tuna's side, well, is time as well, as he has no teammates. And bomb down, about to be defused. He's got to make his way out, but it, I mean, every angle is being watched. So that will be the end of the half. The Axe is claiming it 11 to 4 with the defuse coming in. And a phenomenal display from Team Howard. And indeed, from Rez, 25 yeah, kills to five deaths 25 to five what kd Absolutely. five kd that's incredible exactly and what can stop this man at this point i know james we already hyped him up as the best player in the sir on the in the office he's doing really really poorly but it doesn't matter rez is on the server he's going insane 25 kills he seems to have found his mojo and that uh, looks like brahma's team they're struggling a little bit and it does seem like they're going for a full eco for the first round Whereas Team Howard, they seem to put all their beans into that ammo ground on Howard himself. Oh, here we go. Bramerton opening it up with that MP28 before falling back. But it might be a little bit too late to fall back. Ash is hot on his heels. Goes for the challenge. Oh, Ash certainly has the advantage as Bramerton has to walk down the stairs. His feet visible. Ash is able to spam away, grab some initial damage, and then ultimately the kill. Regenning his health. 4v4 underway. Ash is coming in to help out his teammates, but they've got to be careful because Alex the Geek is there. Greek. It's far too close to Geek. I mean, he's a game dev. I thought it was a we're, Geek. We're all Geeks here. <laughs> yeah. But, but Bram, is, well, Howard, uh, he managed to take down Spike, making it 2 versus 2, and Bomb's actually going down on the B site. Yeah, they've made their way all the way around. A pretty heavy flank, and Ash is going to be coming up behind the Axis as well. Spots at 1, tries the long-range battle with the Grease Gun. Doesn't work out for him, and the problem here is he's given away his chance. As they attempt to push over towards the site, this could get a little bit risky. 
if they get the kill on the Howard, which it doesn't look like they will. It's only going to be Big Tuna left alive. One versus two. Trying to hip fire away that MP28. It remains to be seen just how accurate that hip fire is, but at that range, anything is accurate. There goes Howard's head. Oh, what a kill by Tuna as well. Ash is eliminated. What a great round. A 3k to come out. And that is going to be another round for Team Bramerton. <laughs> and uh, you guys can't see the chat, but Bramerton is certainly mad. <laughs> even even in victory, he's not exactly... Uh, Actually, I believe, he was I believe he was calling Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it was also said by Joe himself. We can't say surprised. it on stream, but... Yeah, but really good round coming in from Tuna. He was able to get that clutch, but maybe a little bit of extension from Howard himself. He's trying to go for that knife kill. A little bit risky. Could have fallback back, allowed his teammate rotate and get a little bit more possession. But that's the difference between devs and players. But it's 11-5. And you have to still kind of favor Team Howard off that first round. Being so, so strong from them. And they've got a pretty good buy as well. No default guns, three Thompsons, one bar and one shotgun on the hands of James McCarthy. At least Tommy should be able to make this round just a little bit faster. Making their way over towards B, there is a Colonel the AK deployed on Bramerton, so that might get a little bit risky if those SMGs were able to get up close, but Spike isn't letting that happen. Although the trade does come in as Tuna, the star player of the previous round, is going to be eliminated. Sergeant Lag holding towards the back of B, but he's already let one player through. That's going to be Rez coming in hard on the flank towards the A players. I think they suspect this, but it's not going to matter because Rez still connects that shot. Nelios also going to fall, leaving the Axis in a 2 versus 4. They've already lost their car 98k. And that is a lot of investment stolen away. But the one advantage they have, Sergeant Lag up behind. Oh, no trigger discipline is on display there. He goes straight for the kill. Could have let Ash walk by and attempt to take out the rest of the players stealthily, but... He does decide to take that opening kill and isn't able to connect anymore. So the round does end, leaving us with a scoreline of 12 to 5. We are only four rounds away from seeing Team Howard taking this. And we got to send our energy to Team Bramerton. Let's get the hashtag Team Bramertons in the chat and give him our energy to win out this beautiful map and claim the first ever victory on the map of Savoya. Yeah, it's because in the previous iteration, so did run into some technical issues, but this time Indeed. seems pretty good. I want to jinx it, but Rez, he's looking hot. He's looking for some more kills. He's hungry. Grandma managed to escape the jaws of death. Just for the time being, but he's getting tagged up a lot by another player, Nelios. I'm kind of and Actually, Rez goes down from an A from Tuna. Ash does manage to get Bram in the end, making it four versus four, but they have to still kind of favor Howard. They seem to be able to get B site very easily compared to Bram's team when they was on that half. Damage coming in across the map, but no kills just yet. And finally, Tuna finds Ash. Tuna's playing well. This game. Yeah, so yeah, we're coming, coming back, back into it in the last, in the last few, few rounds, rounds anyways. anyways. a little bit weird but it's yep. two versus three in favor to team brahma tuna holding it down as well as spike Bag. looking for a kill but not able to find it just yet spike in the hands and at the moment the bomb's in the hands of neos and it seems like they're trying to rotate towards there's no time 15 seconds they're probably trying to save or try and go towards this b side and finally they're attacking 12 seconds is not looking good, especially since Sergeant Light takes out New York, just leaving Howard in a one versus three clocks ticking and was trying to save this gun. And there we have it, does manage to save it in the end. I seem to have a, an issue with my binds there. Just reset then, so shouldn't be talking in game again. And we're all good at coming into a 12 6 scoreline. There's Big Tuna topping off the scoreboard. For the Axis side of Team Bramerton. But, I mean, we can't ignore Rez. 28 for 7. Absolutely phenomenal performance coming out from him. And indeed, followed up by 18 and 16 on Howard and Ash, respectively. So, I mean, everybody kind of picking it up on the Allied side. And I think that's ultimately why they're coming out on top here. They're able to get those, these opening frags. 
It's just working out very well for them, of course. Opening frags in battalion, that map control could just be so powerful. Yeah, so, so powerful, especially on a long range map base. You can get those openings and get into a different position so fast because of these alleys and these buildings. It does seem like mid contestion is not available for that season. Ash might be in a little bit of trouble unless he finds this frag. He's unable to, despite able to get the top of Ash there and as the tides turn in favor towards Team Brammer. These MP4 is not exactly known for their range. It's gonna have a little bit of trouble here. But Alex the Greek is extending the lead, finding Neos as well. It's gonna help his team a lot, just seeing Rez and James, but if you're seeing anyone, it's gonna be Rez and talking about Rez. He's able to find one himself. James. A little bit of blunder there, James. A little bit unlike yourself. We need to get the kill and Brammer cleans it up. Good round for Team Brammer. Not such a good round for Team Howard. Only Res getting a kill that round and the economy looking a little bit shot. Yeah, that's not going to be looking all too good for them. We got some Tommy guns swinging out, but it looks like by and large it is going to be the grease gun backed up by one shotgun and just a few M1 carbines scattered here and there. Not a gun that a lot of people like. Not a gun that I like. But costing only one token, it does give you a, well, possibly a slightly better chance than the Grease Gun. We'll have to see just how they play in. Certainly the theory is that the Grease Gun and MP28 are slightly worse or less versatile than these weapons, but it remains to be seen yet. We have seen quite a few good plays coming in with them, especially in close range. Right, coming into this round. Carbine. That's just found itself a kill in the grease gun. A little bit of struggle there for Howard, but he managed to get the kill on Tune in the end. And he's up some more trouble here. And if he's unable to find this, he's looking for the knife. Oh. He's chasing. And it's actually full damage. He's going to lose his life. The and FML Howard. in the chat. Yep. Not looking too good. Just being res. Bomb is dropped at least. So bomb is fine. And he has to try and defend it, but spike. Man, step up in the end, getting himself that kill, getting himself the round. And uh, Team Howard not having a great time on that lice. Bomb defused. <laughs> in chat, <laughs> Howard. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, full damage uh, nerf incoming. Yeah, well, it's. Uh... This is why we, we shouldn't let devs play games. <laughs> Increase the accuracy of every gun they miss with. But no, of course, yeah. he's of course joking. <laughs> 12 to 8. The scoreline now starting to close up. We see why. We've seen 8 draws come out out of a total of 12 games played, excluding the mishaps earlier on. Of course, all those issues now, not to jinx it, have been fixed by the devs. Some very fast work from them to solve the issues that developed this afternoon. But coming into this, Bramerton is looking for one. Oh, he spots a player. M1 Grand and Han, he suspects one to be up close as well. Good sense to predict that, but he's going to be able to get out of there alive, luckily. Making his way back up towards the house. It does look like B is going to be under siege, and as the onslaught comes out, Bramerton is going to be the first to fall. Ash, oh, Sergeant Lang also down. Ash finds that second kill there. Things are not looking great. They need to find some openings, and that's exactly what Big Tuna was thinking as he picks up one with the car 98k. Still know his position now known. He's going to be watched as he goes for a repeat. He's got to be careful. That's exactly what he's doing. He's waiting for aggression to come up, watching over towards the dark room. Watching for anything, and it looks like he's just about to spot a player, but... Will he hold the angle? That's the real question. Certainly a slow round unfolding, and as the rotation comes around, Spike is spotted. Big Tuna going to be rotating to a good play from the Allies. They've kind of sold an A-fake, prompting that rotation off the B-bomb site where the plant is about to go down. I think Spike has spotted out players crossing at this point, but it's a little too late as he tries to cross back. Howard going over the peak, though. Or looked like he was with the sniper. But Big Tuna is the one to lose his gun. That's a current idea, K, to be picked up by the allies, but they can't find it. It slid down the stairs, but they didn't notice. That is unfortunate. Oh, wow. So they don't manage to carry over that car 98k to the next round. And they probably could have used it. That would have been a nice addition to their one shot on 
King Howard, who has also managed to pick up an MP40, so he's pretty much good for any range. Yeah, like you said, he does manage to pick up an MP40. He's already so managed to get a kill that round. Um, missed a few shots. I'm not too sure you noticed that. Just watching a little bit while he was talking, and it's a little bit of work there, but 13 8. Looking pretty solid. If this was the old build at the moment, it would be a uh, Allies win, but this is MR15, so I see a little bit more few rounds, and Alex agrees with that, taking down Ash. Closing the gap, making it 4 versus 4. Bremen does go down early on as well to the hands of Ninos. It does seem like an almost little bit of passive play coming from Team Bremen, but James managed to find a head of Alex. Been pretty quiet the entire game, but he managed to find it. One kill this half at least. And Nate, just trying to find something. And finally, Howard with the kill with that scope card. I mean, that scope rifle. It's so nice when you see a scope kill. I rejoice. I love scopes. What do you think of scope, Mitch? I think I, I certainly like the patch. I think it's balanced out one of the more OP things about them with the faster movement that they're able to jump around corners and pretty much bunny hop away after grabbing a kill. And it's... At the, at the same time, it is uh, it is still a very powerful weapon. It still feels very good to use when you use it correctly. Like Howard was saying earlier on, it just means that you're punished a bit more for not being an accurate sniper. When you jump out and miss that shot, you're stuck there and you're probably going to die. So you have to connect the shot. And it means that you can't jump out where there's a group of enemies. If you do, yeah, sure, you'll pick up one, but you're dead after that. So uh, I, I certainly like the patches. Obviously, it remains to be seen how it how it plays into the game moving forward. But on paper, the way it's looking right now, I, I'm really liking the patch. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Howard's liking the patch since he's managed to find another one with that scope on. Finally going on top of Brammer, who in the previous half was able to shut him down when he had the scope. Medios trying to find an opening himself, but it's actually Tuna who's trying to do some damage to that MP20 out of range. As you see, not that fireball. Only Ash going on top, taking down Sergeant and Lag. And it's already a 5 versus 3, and it looks like they got B-side control pretty early on. And the MP28 there on Big Tuna, not able to connect the shot to that slightly longer range. It is a pretty weak semi-auto at, at a medium to long range. you got to use it up close. All the time, we haven't really seen it being successful anywhere else. King Howard finds another kill. That's the second with that sniper card, but got to be careful to save it, of course. Because it's only going to be Spike. To follow through here with an STG. He's got to find an ace to win out the round. And I'm not too sure, I believe. He'd almost double his kills if he manages this. So it seems pretty unlikely. I think it's wor worth noting as well, they have decreased the movement speed uh, with the standard car 90 I think just in general, when scoped in, you can't simply uh, press scope and move quickly anymore. There is a, a slight yeah. delay to it, which is. Uh, which is quite good. I mean, it just it slows down the whole aspect, and it looks like Spike just found a bug, walked up the sandbags and made a little bit of noise. So they'll be hunting him down now with an STG in hand. He's going to be pushed from both sides and taken out. Howard also almost died there with scope in hand as well. So if yeah. Spike actually won that duel, like taking him out before Howard managed to run back, that would have cost Team Howard quite a bit of money, especially since he's got an MP4 as a secondary as well. Luckily, he had a teammate there to back him up, kill Spike before he had a chance, and 15-8, match point for Team Howard. First time we've seen it tonight. Thoughts, Mitch? Yeah, well, I mean, only one round left to go. It does seem like Team Howard are the stronger team overall. They're just claiming these rounds and the openings consistently. Bramerton tries to get a little bit aggressive, not able to connect it as it's only going to be Big Tuna to defend here on the B site. A little bit of a passive play from Sergeant Lag, and Tuna might suffer for that, not able to pick up a kill. Eventually taken out as Lag still on the site, holding a very passive play as he's being aggressed on. Car 90 AK in hand, spots at a player and then backs off. And in the 2v5, I mean, it's the picks they need right now. Spike understands that, but he's not able to pick up the frag. Unfortunately, as he pushes in low HP, he will be taken out. And look at that smoke. This is a great demonstration of the new smoke. And Sergeant Lag is attempting to pull off an ace here to keep his team alive. It does look like we are going to see a 16-8 scoreline. Oh, not by a knife. Don't, don't lose it to a knife. Finds the kill at least. 
But there's plenty more to come, and there it is, it's James. Finishing it off with a nice disrespectful knife. And not a bad scoreline, 16 to 8. Not as competitive of a game as we expected to see, and Tuna certainly not happy about the turnout. We'll have yeah. a